From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. David Baines. Hi. How's it going this morning? I'm staying off the streets. I don't want to be beat up again. I'd advise you to do the same. I can't very well do that. The city of Clinton has filed claim for their school building. I have to make an investigation. You're bucking a rough crowd, Mr. Dollar. Where will you meet them all? I intend to. I admire you, but I think you're foolish. Good luck. Just a minute. What? Not only did a school building burn down yesterday, but a man died in that fire. If there was something wrong with it, I want to get to the bottom of it. I expect help from you, too. I'll stay here until I hear from you. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to United Adjustment Bureau, 418 West 61st Street, New York City. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Clinton matter. That's Clinton, Colorado. Expense account item 5, 80 cents, telegram to Dodd and Company, Denver Insurance Brokers, who would handle the policies covering the new school building in Clinton. I requested them to forward copies of the policies. Item 6, 10 cents, one copy of the Clinton Times and the full story on the fire. It was believed by Fire Chief Hanley that the fire had started because of overheated boilers in the heating system. Dollar, is it? Yeah, that's right. I'm an insurance investigator. Yep. Well, what can I do for you? Tell me about the fire yesterday. You sound like you're carrying a chip on your shoulder, Mr. Dollar. We had word that building irregularities were suspected in that school, Chief. The word came from the janitor, Julian Osborne. He burned to death in that fire yesterday, and the building's gone now. You get his head up as you want to, boy. I got my own troubles. I'll tell you what we think, and you can take it, whether you like it or not. We think old Julian Osborne might have passed out, got drunk, or had a heart attack in that building. We think something like that happened, and the boilers kept right on going and built up the pressure. We think the boilers exploded, the fire started, and that was that. And why do you think the whole place went down? Because it spread so fast. Why did it spread? I didn't build the building. I just took care of the fire. You're going to have to change your attitude around here if you want anybody to cooperate, will you? All right, then tell me this. Why, on a day when school wasn't in session, would those boilers be fired up at all? I don't know. Chief... Last night, I talked to Sheriff Doherty, trying to get information about Julian Osborne. He didn't know anything either. I also talked to Flory Hawkins, the school principal. She didn't know. Now you don't know anything. Who does? I've done my job, boy. I've determined cause. You've also given me a chance to look at you, which was about the only reason I came here. Nah. I'll get information elsewhere, Chief. There's some people in this town who want to talk and tell me things. You and your sheriff and whoever else is involved can't keep every mouth in this town shut. And I'll tell you like I told Miss Hawkins. I'm at the Northern Hotel. In case you remember anything. I can't hear you, boy. Not one word. Expense account item seven, dollar eighty. Breakfast in the coffee shop of my hotel for myself and David Baines, who still looked badly battered from the beating he'd taken the night before. You're taking a chance sitting here with me. Hope you realize that. Am I? I'm public enemy number one in this town. I'm the man who built the school that didn't stay up. Look, Baines, I want you to tell me all about it. If you have any information or knowledge that would be helpful in this investigation, then you'd better give out with it right now. What specifically do you want to know? First, the town. Do you know what this place is? It's a backyard. And only the rich kids can play here. Vickery, Hanley, Doherty, those are the rich kids, Mr. Dollar. The rest of us are, well... We live across the tracks. Let's start with Vickery. He's a builder. Not only here, all over these mountains. Grand Junction, Rifle, Mesa, all over. He's got a million dollars and a million angles. He's the one who sent me to Europe to study for a year after I completed my plans for the new building. Got me out of the way. Okay. Fire Chief Hanley. A friend of Vickery's. And any friend of Vickery's is going to get rich one way or another. Sheriff Doherty. He keeps the law orderly for Vickery. Very necessary. Okay, then. The fire itself. Chief Hanley says the school boilers blew up and caused the fire. 
There was no reason for those boilers to be fired up. No reason. If they were fired, they were fired to blow up. They had automatic shutoff equipment. What about Julian Osborne? You say he notified the broker in Denver that something was wrong with the building, and that's how you got here. I don't know. They might have fired it for money, too. I told you I was in Europe until they constructed it. I got back in Clinton four days ago. I went over to see my building. They used my outside drawing, Dollar. Wooden beams where I indicated steel girders. Only half the plumbing and heating system, other things. It looked like they'd made it up as they went along. Did you talk to anybody about it? Oh, sure. The contractor. Vickery. Vickery. He told me to keep my mouth shut and be a good boy. Do you think he got you out of town during the construction so you wouldn't interfere? I think so. I'm not important, but it was the easiest way. I understand Mr. Vickery is a little unpopular today. What? A delegation went out to his house to hang him or something. Baines was partially right. A delegation had gone out to see Roy Vickery and his polished fine domain at the end of town. They were still there when I drove up in my rented car. 20 or 30 irate citizens demanding an explanation for the lost school. Ten uniformed men from Sheriff Doherty's office formed a half-moon circle in front of the main entrance, their holsters unbuckled. The sheriff himself was directing the operation. All right, just a minute there. Hello, Sheriff. Huh? Johnny Dollar, I talked to you last night. Oh, yeah. Chief Hanley called me about you. The chief called you, and last night you called Flory Hawkins. That was nice. Keep the wires burning. The chief said you came over to see him. Used abusive language. Tried to cause trouble. The chief was mistaken. I wasn't trying to cause trouble, Sheriff. There's enough of that in this town. I was just trying to find out how the fire started yesterday. The chief told you how it started. I didn't believe him. Now, what do you think of that? You better watch your step around here, Mr. Dollar. You seem to be looking for arguments all the time. Not at all, Sheriff. I'm misunderstood. We understand you all right. How's Mr. Vickery? He's all right, and he's going to stay all right. I'm sure he will. But these people don't like their school burning down. It's expensive. Also, their kids could have been in it. I want to see Mr. Vickery about that. He isn't seeing anyone, Mr. Dollar. And we aren't letting anybody in to see him. Really? Did any of you people hear that? Now, look here. Hey, listen, folks. Listen to me, will you? Look. Now, listen. I'm an insurance investigator. I'm worried about what happened to your school yesterday. Keep quiet. They tell me Mr. Vickery built that school... The architect who designed it said it wasn't built to his specifications. Now, I want to go in and ask Mr. Vickery about that. The sheriff here doesn't want me to do that. I'll get you for this, Dollar. Wait a minute. The sheriff just said, I'll get you for this. All right, hold it. Hold it, please. Please, now listen to me. Listen. I'll put it to the sheriff again so you can all hear. Sheriff, I want to go in and see Mr. Vickery on business. Well, go ahead. Thank you. (laughs) At a direction from Sheriff Doherty, the wedge of deputies opened up long enough for me to walk through the wrought iron gate and up the steps to the Vickery Mansion. A tall man in a white jacket answered the door and ushered me into a den that was stocked with good liquor and big leather chairs. Finally, a big man in a blue suit walked in. He had lots of good teeth, and there wasn't an ounce of fat on his 230 pounds. I'm Roy Vickery. It was quite an act with Sheriff Doherty just now. I watched you from upstairs. That's a good, safe place to watch from, Mr. Vickery. Now that you're in, what can I do for you? Tell me everything you can about that school building. Mm Mm-hmm. Has the uh, the city of Clinton made a claim yet? Yes, $200,000, building and contents. You got in town pretty fast. We heard there might be something wrong with that building before the fire. Apparently there was. Who told you a thing like that? Julian Osborne. He's dead now, you know. Oh? Well, two boilers explode and there's something wrong with the building. Is that the way you people figure? Yeah. Well, so do we, and we couldn't find anything wrong. Who's we? Officially, we're the Civic Construction Department. We just had a meeting. We thought we ought to. Yeah, yeah. I figure those people hanging around outside should be worrying. Well, they don't worry me, and you don't worry me. A drunken janitor goes to sleep and lets the boilers kick up, and the joint blows apart and burns down. That's what we decided in the meeting. It was a a terrible accident. We'll have to use an old garage or something for a school, but but then we'll get around to building another school with the insurance money we have coming. And that's that? That's that. 
Mr. Vickery, I'd like a copy of the specifications that went into that building. Sure, anything at all. Uh, there you are. Okay. That'll do for now. Good. Now, you can get out of my house, Dollar. You smell smoky. There were 50 pages of specifications on the building materials used in the construction of that school. They looked all right. They also looked as though they could have been forgery. Expense account item eight, six dollars. One bottle of whiskey for David Baines and myself in my hotel room. Baines went over the specifications page by page. Okay, what do you think? These are my specifications, more or less. This is what's on paper that went into the building. How about what actually went into it? Well, the little I saw, they cut corners everywhere. The outside was just a shell of this stuff. You sure? These are my notes. I can remember this much. Can you remember it in front of a notary? I want a sworn statement. I don't know. You what? Well, don't look at me that way. You can get my statement and possibly a half a dozen other statements. On paper, you'd have a case. Then what would you do? Go to the district attorney? We haven't got a district attorney. We got a county attorney who's elected for a four-year term. All right, I'll go to him. Vickery? Then I'll go to somebody else, the insurance commission. You try to go any farther, they'll kill you, Dollar. Well, let me worry about that. Now, will you make a statement? Sorry. That'd kill me, too. And that's the way matters stood in Clinton, Colorado, 24 hours after their new school building had burned down and a man had died in the flames. Everyone seemed to know it was all wrong, but no one was willing to do anything about it. Johnny Dollar. Hello, Dollar. Roy Vickery. Well. You go over those specifications? Yes, I did. Very thoroughly. Well? I think they're fakes, Mr. Vickery. <laughs> I didn't ask you your opinion, Dollar. But you've got it. Well, I'm sure you're entitled to it. Uh, when, when are you leaving town? Not for a while. I was kind of hoping you'd be leaving like in about an hour. You'd make good connections then. Sorry. I haven't really gotten around as much as I want to yet. You saw me. I can tell you anything. Oh, I'll get around to you again. Get out of town, Dollar. Now. Vickery, there are times when I don't hear good. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a lady who promised to love, honor, and obey a building inspector, but wound up a widow. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 